The entire team at Emsolation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to Emsolation. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples' continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. Hey, lovelies, this special excerpt from M's chat with Matilda Bosley is being shared with you thanks to the 3,571 people who subscribe to our premium service, M Solution Extra. Our premium service gives you a personalised link to an upgraded podcast feed where you can access the full 35-minute chat with Matilda, plus get other exclusive content like Love Nundrums, The Marriage Diaries with M's hubby Scott, and in conversations with Kaz Cook, Victoria Devine, Doris Unane, Senator Jordan Steele-John, Art Simone, and many more. You also get two extra episodes every Tuesday and Friday each week, more access to M and Michael with their Ask Me Anything, merch discounts, ticket pre-sales, and so much more. Help us keep this independent neurodivergent female-led podcast alive because the cost to you is pretty much minuscule. Yearly, it's $1.72 a week. Monthly, it's $2.49 a week. So subscribe and come have even more fun with all our extra pals at msolation.supercast.com now. Extra. 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 It's Emsolation Extra. Extra. Hello, Emsolation pals. Well, this is exciting. I know that a lot of you love it when we do ADHD chat here at Emsolation. So today you are getting a very hefty helping of it, a delicious serving. It's all ADHD. It's two chaotic ADHD women just speaking their own language at their own frequency. You do not have your podcast turned to 1.5 today. No, ma'am, no, sir, no, gentle they. It's just us talking at our normal level. Who is us? I speak of award-winning social media reporter and presenter for Guardian Australia, the wonderful Matilda Bosley. Now, Matilda came to fame on TikTok where she had these, uh, and I came across her videos. It was kind of like, you know, the beginner's guide to ADHD, tips and tricks, noticings of symptoms, ways to get a diagnosis. She became like a beacon of hope and excellent content for those of us who are late diagnosed ADHDers. She's now written a book, The Year I Met My Brain, a travel companion for adults who have just found out they have ADHD. And if you're here, it's possible you belong to this cohort. The book is out today. You must get yourself a copy or get it for someone you know who's at the beginning of their journey or perhaps at the end and still confused. Although if you're at the end, that would suggest you're close to death. I'm sorry, I regret saying that sentence. But please, go out and get, grab yourself a copy now. But before you do that, sit back and enjoy the frenetic, chaotic, paced chat that's about to envelop your ears. Please welcome to Amstelation Extra, the wonderful Matilda Bosley. Matilda Bosley, welcome. She's giving me the double thumbs up. I'm. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a double <laughs> thumbs up amount of excited to be here. <laughs> Matilda is here to talk about the launch. It's today. Launch day is today because this is going out on Tuesday, the 3rd of October. Yes. Your book is out today, bitch. Oh, my God. The year I met my brain, a travel companion for adults who have just found out they have ADHD. Well, that's me and you. Yeah. I'm holding the book up now. I can't believe it's real. Congratulations on finishing a book because that is like an Everest for people with our brains. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely, because I'm a reporter in my everyday life and then so. For The was, Guardian. For, for The Guardian. And I was like, I can write. <laughs> It will be easy. So I saw it was a sign up. It was a meme that was like, I do this not, we do this not because it's easy, but because we thought it would be easy. <laughs> and that's very much. <laughs> that's the title of my next autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just me just sort of sitting there each weekend, bawling my eyes oh, no. out typing. I see you. As I do it. Yeah. So for me, when I have to sit down and type. 
I liken it to when a cat's trying to find a comfortable position in the sun. Mm. Are you similar in that or are you able to just sit down and write? For me, I'll sit down, I'll write two sentences, I'll reward myself with an hour on Instagram, then I'll get up and I'll decide I probably have to change the chair and then I'll like go back and write a couple words and I'll feel like tired and like constrained so then I'll go and reward myself with a bit of telly. Yeah. That's how my write. And then all of a sudden I'll have like 30 minutes so I'll have to leave the house and then I'll get into like a flow. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's about five hours of maybe completing 15 minutes of work and then a solid sort of like six-hour fugue state where I have no concept of time. Don't you forget to go to the toilet. uh, Deadline's probably the next day. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, And, you know, then we'll write it and just be like, this is is the best thing any human has ever written. You read it the next morning. It's chaotic. Not quite accurate, is that? Um, <laughs> no punctuation. I oh, tend absolutely to, not. I tend to forget the punctuation. It's like oh, those. Yeah. I'm like those sentences. Hemingway didn't use punctuation though, so it's fine. It's fine if Hemingway did it. It's literally fine. <laughs> How often do I compare myself to Hemingway? Do we think <laughs> a lot? <laughs> I the first chapter I did, I made the mistake of like. So it's it's as my humble brag. Talk about lot, it. There's a lot of sources in it. There's it's like, great. It is like, literally. I had Kaz Cook on a couple of weeks ago talking about how to menopause. This mm. is how to ADHD. Thank it you. is. It's like it's great. It's you're probably too young, but it used to be a thing called the Melways. Do you oh remember, yeah. Did you ever hear about the Melways? I was just a weird little kid who would look through the Melways. We used to drive around with map books. Yeah, that blows my mind. But it's Wild. like a Melways for ADHD is for their brain. It's really good. You're welcome. But talk oh about it. Gosh. First chapter. Oh, yes. Oh, I was going to – this was not so much talking about the book, but first chapter – so I, it's very – there's a lot of research in it. Um, but the first time, uh, just having kind of forgot how to do research since uni, I read all the papers, just took the notes into my brain and then wrote it and then I was like, I'll put the reference in here. Had no clue when I went back what the references were. So it took me twice as long. It found them all eventually. It yeah. It's like but, me, I screenshot shit on my phone thinking I'm going to need this. Yeah. And then I'll go back over the screenshots and be like, what the fuck did you screenshot that soup label for? I have that just like for random alarms during the day where I'm like, I'll be falling asleep and then I'll just be like, oh, I need to remember to do this. Just put it on like 15 different alarms or like a five minute because there's like a million alarms in my phone. I never Same. deleted one in my life. Yeah. And then wake up the next morning. I'm like, cool. The next two hours of my life is just going to be snoozing alarms that I have no, no idea, idea what they're for. Same with my Not notes section in my phone. I look like a serial killer. <laughs> I just write one word. I'll remember. Yeah. Can't be bothered doing this sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and it just says, like, appointment. Well, Love which that. one, dickhead? <laughs> For what? When? I'll write and go, oh, yeah, I've got to make that appointment. And I'll go to my notes section, appointment. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. And then I'll go back to my notes section at the end of the day, like, oh, God. I, I just find notes as, like, desperately need to remember, cannot forget, list of things written six months ago, never checked it. <laughs> Not once. Wow. How have you written a book? I, don't, this, I swear to God, it is well resourced. There's so many annotations at the back. No, I get but, it. But um, no, it genuinely is. So in between each chapter, so yes, it's covering basically what is ADHD, what causes it, and then ha- why there aren't women that are being diagnosed, why diagnosis is still so much of a remit of sort of white middle class people, even though that is not the demographic that is most likely to even have ADHD. Uh, and then getting into, yeah, like life tips, uh, you know, how to live with it, like genuinely, mm. you know, just little tips and tricks. And then also that concept of what battles do we actually need to fight? Because I feel like often there's so often there's like lists of tics, yeah. tips and tricks and then it's like I don't actually care. I, I could just not spend my mental energy doing that. So that was that's a big focus on being like, you know, you, it's not it, – St Peter's not going to worry too much about like whether you left <laughs> the clothing in the washing machine this too is, long. Do you know what I realised along these lines? Life is like cycles, not – beginning and end points. So I gave myself a really hard time. Like I never get to the bottom of the washing in my house Mm. because there's five of us, there's three kids, it's nuts. And I realised that the washing needs to be viewed as a cycle. As long as everyone has clean clothes to wear somewhere at some point, it doesn't matter if the baskets aren't empty in the laundry. And as an ADHD, I'm never going to, I'm going to have to rewash something five times because it's going to get that smell about it because I've left it in the machine and forgotten, you know. Yeah. And so also the idea that and ADHD is, on, on average, our 100% mm. is a neurotypical's 150. Like we could drop back to 50% on most things because we're such people pleasers because we've had to overcome and over try and put so much effort in. Yeah. But if we just maybe didn't kill ourselves half as much, we would still be at 100% for most people. 
Definitely. And that has given me, like, I notice myself just going, maybe I don't need to colour coordinate that thing that I'm sending with the, with the glitter and the ribbon and maybe I could just pull it back. Yeah. And, and that definitely is the case of, like, just because I feel like so much of the things that people with ADHD struggle with are so wrapped up in the things that we as a society have moralised and what makes you, like, a good person. So true. You know, okay, you're not late to things, you don't, you know, you're replying to people, you're keeping your house tidy. Like, somehow having a tidy tidy house house. is, like, a moral aspect. And tied to the woman as well. Oh, completely. You know, so you add the gendered aspect. When people come to my house, I know, and if it's messy, I know that they will internally and subconsciously judge me, not Scott. Completely. You know, and that's, and when Scott walks in, and you know what I realised, we've been raised as women to value that kind of thing. That's what we tie our self-worth to. But dudes don't place the same importance on housework. So my husband and I spent 20 years arguing about the state of the house because he just doesn't give a fuck and doesn't judge himself on it. Mm. I do. Chuck ADHD on top of that. Like... I'm fucked. Because especially, and, and it's even the things that you are not as great at with ADHD are often the things that you've been criticised about your whole life growing mm. up, the things that people will like mention and make jokes about. So it's the things that you're even ultra sensitive about totally. and then you still struggle with them. Mm. And I and it, it's totally gendered. I have a section in the book. Sorry, let me just a little spruiking. Please go My, back to the book um, as many times as you want because I will forget. Oh, no. And I, you are I'll here forget with it. I'm holding it. No, no, do it. <laughs> I, so there's a little section I, I have in between each chapter. I have these little interludes um, that are called diary entries. Um, and one of them I talk about, like, it's called The Bad Wife. And I talk about how, you know, you have, okay, you, two people move out of home. One's a boy, one's a girl. They're 19. They both have undiagnosed ADHD. Mm. The guy, it's like, okay, he's moved into kind of a shitty share house and there's only, like, pizza boxes in the fridge and there's the bathroom's a bit yucky and boys. there's like no toilet paper mm. on the thing and and like that's just boys totally. you know like that's just like the bachelor lifestyle and for girls you maybe get a year or two of of this yeah. grace and it's like okay but it's still a bit yucky and like no wonder she doesn't get taken seriously at work she's got like a whole pile of clothes mm. and she's spending so much money on uber eats and stuff mm. like that and by the time they both reach 25 her grace, the the grace that the people are willing to give her, totally gone. Mm. But then at 25, you know, what happens? Okay, well, suddenly this guy with undiagnosed ADHD, he's been living the bachelor lifestyle, no one really judges him. He is suddenly got a long-term girlfriend or he gets married and he moves in and, it, you know, statistically probably a neurotypical girlfriend. So all of a sudden he has someone to do oh. the to do that tidying because inherently, you know, both of their mums, it was always their mums who did it, you know, that they were always the ones packing the school lunches and doing the notes and, mm. you know, and he never really learned to cook that much so mm. it's just easier for her to go to the supermarket and buy all the things. But then when the ADHD woman gets a long-term boyfriend and moves in, it's not like her executive functioning is reduced significantly Mm. because we're so socialised. You know, no matter how much feminist literature both her and her partner have read, again, it's just normal that, okay, well, yeah, she would be doing the supermarket shop and making the things and, yeah, she's organising, she's meant to be organising, you know, his mum's mother's day. Anything. And she's suddenly failing at it. So you have this situation where a guy, and it's still so difficult for men Mm. to have ADHD, like I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is that often, okay, now he's got a lot of the stuff worked so he can actually put all his energy into his career and his job. Mm. And you have this woman who's basically struggling and is used up so much of her energy by 9am, let alone 5pm. And it's this situation where like ADHD kind of does make you a bad homemaker. Oh, yeah. But that is only a crime for one gender. Yes. Or, you know, in the classic, you totally. know, if we're, you know, going with just the boy-girl divide. Yeah. But that's only a transgression and, like, a crime against your own womanhood and a failure for women. Mm. So it is just this way where, you know, you do totally hear about, okay, you have this many people who have ADHD in childhood, but by the time they're 28, you know, however many percent don't have it anymore. And I do have to wonder, I'm like, how much of that is just men getting wives? Yeah. Genuinely, because to be diagnosed... Oh, they grew, he grew out of it, did he? Yeah. Or did he get a secretary? Exactly, because, like, for people who don't know, like, the criteria for having ADHD requires that it has a negative impact on your life. Mm. So during calm moments of your life, you may actually be dipping below the diagnostic threshold, Mm. which is part of the reason that it kind of 
doesn't make sense to think of ADHD just as a childhood thing that you grow out of a lot of the time. Like a lot of people dip in and out throughout their life. But I do wonder, I'm like, how much of that statistic is just men having like really wonderful wives <laughs> and women Taking not? Taking it on. Because you see yeah. the diagnosis rate in adulthood is genuinely women diagnosed at the same rate, even though notionally we think that it's probably about half as many people. Mm. Well, it's like, yeah, because they are still living in that world full of this super executive, like highly demanding executive function, all of that. Yeah, I just, when you, yeah, just when you look at the sort of gender of it all mm. and it, it's it's wild the way that women are just punished that little bit extra. Yeah. Even just like I used to kind of joke like, oh, I know my period's coming when it feels like my entire life's falling apart. <laughs> What it actually turns out is um, it probably was not just that my life feels like it's falling apart. It probably was. It is. Because there's, it's not like absolutely concrete yet, but there is a growing amount of research that shows that ADHD symptoms get worse in the week I leading up to concrete. your period. I mean, I mean, it is. It's not like I meta, four different levels meta of analysis oh, yet, well, like, well. but we've got some pretty robust Do you mean studies. There's been no, not enough research done on menstrual cycles and ADHD. That's what? wild. Oh my God. What? As if. Oh my God. What? But it was, it was fascinating. Cause so I, in the, there's two chapters in my book, one talking specifically about women. I mean, women have spoken about all throughout, but talking about why girls are so underdiagnosed. And then the next chapter I wanted to talk about the race disparity. And what I found is like as frustrating and unbelievably like disheartening it was doing the women's chapter to see how little research oh is boy. out there. Like yeah. there isn't even that desperate. So w- when it comes to women, you know, we t- 10, five, 10 years ago, we're like, oh shit, women can get this. We forgot about them. Mm. Research, research, research. And so we've only got like the dregs coming through at the moment, Mm -hmm. but we've still got a slowly building amount. We haven't even had that like, oh shit, realisation moment when it comes to how race affects ADHD or not affects ADHD, how ADHD is affected by racism Mm. and, you know, all the sort of entrenched systematic things that go into it. And so I was realising I have this really thick, chunky chapter about women and my chapter about race had to be smaller because there just wasn't even the studies mm. to even have the theoretical discussion. Well, gender diverse as well. Oh, oh my Nothing. gosh. I couldn't even, because I was... I no, was, no, I know. I looked into it too for when I was doing oh. stuff and it's like, oh, this is, this is not good. Because I was wanting, like, in the research... Like you're a gender diverse person of colour oh, good, or a diverse good background... It's, I know, it's grim. Good luck. Mm. And I had to write that at the start of the women's chapter being like, I, I j- this isn't going to be as inclusive as I want. And I'm going to just have to be saying boy, girl, and not think about trans men, how, you know, potentially there's some biological factors, but then there's socialisation factors and it all mixes in. I'm just like, sorry. But, like, I literally can't because the studies aren't there. Mm. I can't. Because even studies that are specifically looking at gender don't even acknowledge that gender diversity mm. exists. It's wild. <laughs> Well, here it is. It's out today. Matilda Bosley, the year I met my brain, a travel companion for adults. We've just found out they have ADHD. She's holding it. Hold up to the camera. What do you, we're filming. Do yourself a little, do yourself a little ad. The uh, year I met my brain, it's a travel companion for adults who just found out they have ADHD. There's lots of little pictures in it. Uh, there's some tips. There's some statistics, but not too many. They're interwoven. They're interwoven. It's very, it's backed up by research, but like you wouldn't even notice. Don't even worry about it. Um, there's like, uh, there's stories about me crying. That's a lot of them. Uh, and there's tips about uh, how to rearrange your fridge. And that's, that, ah. that's all, yeah, so. Put stuff I, in the side of the door. Yeah, I put all my condiments in the green keep drawers because yeah. you'll you'll go to the fridge for a totally. condiment during cooking. Yeah. This is not a this is not something I invented. I saw it on TikTok. Yeah. Put all the fresh fruit in the door. Ah. Oh. Fresh fruit and veg and okay. then you use it. I still won't eat it. No, no, no. It's it's more it's theoretical. We believe that it's gonna be better. Uh the year I met my friend. <laughs> If you were wondering if I was qualified to write it, let that be proof. Um, <laughs> buy it now. Out now. It's out now. Please buy it. Um, I love it and it's my whole heart. Yay! Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I'm so extra.